me to explode? Yes! That's what I've been waiting for! Um, okay, I'll try. Uh, Gary! You are gonna finish your dessert, and you are gonna like it! Ah! Now it's your turn. That's not what I meant, you burning old head! Ooh, good one. No! LOL Podcast Season 3, Episode 19. What's up, guys? Uh, Shoutouts to every single person who actually watches all the videos. You know, you guys are amazing. I, I know I'm, you know, still new to making League content, but I will be getting better at it. You know, a lot of you guys like the LCK highlights reaction, so... Okay, I'll just keep doing them then, you know? Um, LPL is about to go into playoff mode. LCK has about two more weeks left. LEC is everyone beats everyone. And then you have LCS, where a team like Team Liquid can be first place, and their jungler is practically doing nothing. <laughs> I just don't understand, you know? Like, but... Uh, this week, uh, Ravioli, he wasn't feeling well, so he wanted to step down just for this week. And we are joined here by uh, Shinryu. You haven't been here in a while, man. How you been? I've been pretty good, man. How about you? Oh, good. I'm getting old, bro. Being being the uh, old C9 fan to all these like new age kids, it's like, dude, you gotta stop freaking out, man. Like everyone <laughs> freaks out over like a few losses. It's like, calm down. And also, fun fact: uh, C9 hasn't went zero two since what summer 2018. Because I forgot, they were always memeing about going 1-1. One and one. <laughs> Like, we don't have zero two weeks here. I was like, well, that's definitely changed. So, uh, Shinryu, I, w I just wanted to ask you, um, what do you think about uh, C9's recent losses? Uh, I mean, it's like realistic. I just think they've just been mis-executing. Mis I think, uh, I don't think it's a draft issue. I think the drafts have been fine. Like, the, the Sona Lux game, like, I think the draft was perfectly fine. They were actually severely... <laughs> severely in favor like i usually don't even go for like what ls says a lot of the times like i don't hate him i don't love him but like he's correct all you have to do is stack mr and that other team is completely useless so and then they rushed a fucking what was it frozen heart huh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <It's> like <laughs> i don't know hmm. i think it's uh i think it's like a hit or miss i think they'll be fine to be honest i mean it's best of ones so, like, realistically, do I think at a best of five, the only team that I think is going to get them, maybe, would be TSM. And that's mainly just because you're getting double lift. And then maybe TL because Core JJ is MVP. <laughs> right? <laughs> Core JJ's been playing out of his mind, actually. I, I think that the next MVP, MVP candidate, who which is even close to him, would either be Closer or you would have uh, Bjergsen. That's probably... Yeah, yes, probably I was going to say that. People, people, people kind of make fun of Bjergsen, but hey, this split, I'll give it to him. He's been playing pretty well. He's been playing pretty well. Closer's been out of his mind. Like, if you want to just add in, like, MVP for uh, Team Liquid and Golden Guardians, it have to be Closer or Core JJ, because without them, I don't even know what their team would even look like, because, like, what was the stat with Broxa, where, like, he, he like they're in a team fight and he's 0-0-2? I guess he's throwing in some autos to win a team fight? Like, what is he doing? <laughs> Oh, bro, they were memeing about him being like, oh, oh, no, like zero kill participation, like 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, but uh, just to go back to the whole Cloud9, I mm -hmm. think going 0-2, I think a lot of people don't think about it, but this is a pretty tough week. I think TSM going in, they were winning three games in a row, and then they won their fourth, and uh, Golden Guardian is also on a three-game win streak, so both of these teams are on ups, um, and they both caught Cloud9 on a downswing. You know, those two games show that, you know, these two teams are ready for the playoffs. Um, and if Cloud Nine's not ready um, and they're mis-executing the fights, then, hey, you know, th they're going to lose these best of ones. Also, TSM quietly has been, you know, rank racking up the wins. They've actually mm -hmm. been on a four-game win streak. They're actually now the second, or you could, you know, quote-unquote debate they're the best team in the LCS. These are not things people were generally going to say about Team Liquid or TSM coming to the split so i wanted to ask you guys also it, it's so weird for them to to just be having a slump right now is it because they're experimenting is that the excuse people are, are going to constantly keep giving me because i don't accept excuses after like one or two game losses that's just like come on like i get people are, are fanboys but you can't be a fanboy you have to be a fan and look at things you know objectively like they're just not playing good now they're not playing individually bad but they're not playing good as a team you know mm -hmm. So I want to uh, ask you guys. <clears throat> sorry, 
what do you think also what would oh it's hard to say so given their bad gameplay recently <laughs> what would be the best idea for them to a- actually move forward and fix their gameplay is it specific champion draft is it you know because we've seen blabber on trundle he doesn't know what a trundle pillar does apparently <laughs> yeah so. he, he grace tanked the scion ult when he could have pillared it but so like, realistically i think they need to go based off their best player in on the team uh give blabber an aggressive jungler or he needs to i don't know if he just isn't comfortable on it but they need to pick up like graves graves or something like because mm-hmm. your olaf's permaband against him he's been he hasn't been banned against c9 four times the first three games and then the one time that they let him through and they didn't take him and that's when they got clapped by 100 thieves so realistically i think they should just give blabber an aggressive jungler niski should go on things like galio again because niski's more of a team player than a individually skilled Hello, Flair. Yeah. So good, but hi. How you doing, Flair? Spot. Yeah, you're you're right there, sliding in between two guys. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Hell yeah, brother. Yeah. Hell yeah. So, hey, Flair, how you doing? Uh, what do you think about C9's recent, uh, you know, slump? Because this is the first time that they've actually been in a slump, you know, all year essentially. Um, to be honest, it feels like it's. A symptom of not being able to go to things like MSI and this, that, the other. You look at like Team Liquid and like TSM, like how they were able to continue their dominance was being able to go to those international tournaments. And the fact that C9 didn't get, really get scrims against some of like the top tier teams uh, in like other regions, it I feel like that was like one of the big reasons why they were able to like, or one of the big reasons why they just did bad all of a sudden was because they tried to do something different and because they're just not good enough. They can't really even adapt, like do anything different. And they should just stick to their style. And now TL is our best best team, which is so weird to say. So what do you think about the MVP for the split? Um, I think it should be Core. I mean, it, it would only make sense to give it to Core because he's just absolutely smurfing for Liquid. But I mean, like, I think you could make an argument for a couple players. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Closers looked really good. I think uh, Beards look really good. Santorin has been really good. Like, there's a lot of, like... Ew, Santorin. That feel like, Ew, like, gross. Yeah. Well, yeah, <laughs> Santorin, you can like, just kidding. Well, why Santorin? But he's, da- he's played this role in FlyQuest that, like, I feel like is one of the most overlooked things as, like, the supportive jungler. Like, you have, like, Blabber, Closer, these players that are, are like, that are put on picks that are, like, meant to be, like, a carry-style jungler while he's kind of, like, on Trundle duty. And he slowly made a case for being, like, one of the best supportive junglers in the league, if not, like, the best supportive jungler, like, we've ever seen. Um... And I think, like, it's, like, a lot of, like, even Mark said, like, and a couple other analysts said, like, he's actually insanely good at it. And he's, it's, like, what's helped FlyQuest and, like, their mid-jungle and, and being able to help in general on that team. I personally have him as my second best jungle. Yeah. The split. We had a jungle tier list um, last night for, for the show, if you guys missed it. I, I think, if I, if I should just have the rankings up here, like, A tiers were, like, Closer and Blabber. B tier was, like, Santorin um, Dardock, and I think it was Fenskarin, um, and then you at the bottom people like Smithy and Broxa and Contracts all in C tier, and F tier was Spica and Wiggly, because, you know, uh, <laughs> pick, pick Kane, run it down, pick Ch- Olaf, run and invade, die, give her t- whole team, like, <laughs> oh, good lord, good well, man. So for, for Spica, I, with- for Spica? I, I, for Spica, I mean, purely mm-hmm. based off the most recent game, I think Spica played one of the most important roles in that yeah. one. If you look at every team fight, anytime Kennen went in, he immediately got ulted out. <laughs> it's like <laughs> literally like Spica Spica played amazing that last game. But I feel like overall, yeah, I, I mean I wouldn't consider Ix Smithy a, a C tier, but that's just because if you look at what his team is like. <laughs> I think if you were to look at like jungle as a role, it's actually probably one of the most stacked roles in the league. Um so it's really, in my opinion, it's really hard to be like, oh, this is F tier junglers. It's like, okay, well, you're putting X Smithy, one of the best play- like p- players of all time in, in the LCS, at, like F tier. It's like, eh, I don't know if he actually is an F tier. Like, yeah, like, jungler, I, you know, it's like, but I think it's just as the, like, I couldn't do that, you know? <laughs> Straight up running it down hard garbage. <laughs> like, I don't think, he, I, I, that's different. But <laughs> I, I, like, I don't think you can put, like, certain players that, like, especially, like, 
with when you have like certain players on certain teams that are just bad teams overall or like teams that have just like not had enough time like i i i find a hard case to put Xmithy as like one of the worst junglers in the league mm -hmm. no you're right i like someone tried to tell me that Xmithy is just as bad as wiggly i'm like no you'd have to be actually blind to play as bad as wiggly like this man I swear, in about week three or four, I was watching a COG game, because I obviously I do analyst work to, you know, do the channel. This man missed a trundle pillar, and the target's not moving. What? <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? That's like impossible. What? What? You can't hit non-moving targets now? <laughs> what is that? You know, and it's yeah. COG. Um, for CLG, I just, they're, they're definitely the worst team. You know, I hope IMT or Dig get in the playoffs because CLG is definitely not deserving in playoffs. But yeah, I hope they, I hope they fall. They benched Pope LT for this week. Oh, oh yeah, you're it's, right. Oh, oh we should talk about, like, yeah. They benched their best player. What's yeah. the point? Yeah, <laughs> good God. And it's like... Uh, Poe Belter's, like, such a, like, not just a player that is, like, infamous for being, like, just a decent, like, all-around, like, NA resident player, but he's also, like, a, like, he's coached for a bit, he's uh, been infamous, and, like, uh, CLG talks about how, like, he was really good in, like, talking with, through players and talking through issues and being able to, like, solve problems and find a, an identity for that team, and, like, they actually looked, like, not like a horrible team by the end of spring, even though their record didn't show it, um, and now they're benching him for who knows what reason. They started off great this, but they were like what four and one or some shit. Like, no, they, they started didn't. Off they got a free win against Immortals when they were with the main, the quote unquote main roster with was the Ica against Ica, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then you have like when Dignitas was in a weird spot, and I think they got a win off of Golden Guardians and like a couple other like beginning of the split teams. I think EG hey. when they still had Jazuke and uh, Kumo running it down a little bit, you know. Hey, like, wins or wins. <laughs> yeah, yeah, every team that's lost to CLG has lost their job. Every player that has lost to CLG <laughs> has lost their job. So I don't know if you can necessarily say that losing to CLG is is, is that uh, nice. But the issue with CLG is what I'm was when I watch their games. Is Stick State really the worst ADC? Or is uh -oh. Smoothie the worst support? Mm, really, I don't know. I think they're only just held down <sighs> by Wiggly and Ruin. Like ruin is ruin is okay, ruin. None of the, okay. Here's the thing: Stixa and Smoothie just don't know how to lane. Like, like, yeah, it, Like, I, I think like they're good, but I don't think they're like, and maybe good past like 15 minutes or whatever. But like, I just don't think they know how to lane. Like, period. Like, they need a, a laning coach in the bot lane just to go and just mix everything up because I don't think they know how to lane. Smoothie needs to go back to his first or second split with C9, where he was pretty much second or whatever for MVP back when he was hard smurfing in support. <laughs> well, and he was always like, being able to like, go into lanes and, and deny so much like um, farm and being able to like poke people out and like have so much dominance, and all of a sudden he can't even lane. I, I don't know if it's like he failed to adapt or if he's just like an all-around bad... Like, I don't know. It's yeah, crazy yeah. Like, to me. Uh, I think it's weird because they've leaned together for quite some time. It's kind of weird seeing how they lack so much synergy in lane and in team. Too. They have anti-synergy. Like, I, I think Smoothie has shown himself, like, I think they're both pretty much the bottom tiers right now. Like, maybe not the worst, but probably one of the worst for their roles in the LCS. And it's just weird seeing Smoothie going from C9 to this, and then Stick say going from, like, the CLG hope to this. The CLG, uh, yeah, the oh, death yeah, of CLG. Six went from the like the best ADC performance at a North at an international event for North America, and now he's the reason why they can't win a game sometimes. <laughs> well, like on paper, this roster is supposed to be like a decent roster. Like people had them at like a top five team in NA before like uh, I had them at like the eighth. off season. Yeah, I had them at like eighth. I thought they made yeah, playoffs only. Eighth. Eighth yeah, eighth seven. they had Pole Belter and Immortal had Ica. I was well, like, you know, saying, like way like i'm talking like mm -hmm. before like when it was crown like before Ooh, yeah Shadow, oh in spring mm -hmm. hyping this team up like uh okay well you're trading smoothie for um what's his face it was, it was uh he was Bio Frost, yeah and you're trading crown um for uh whatchamacallit um i can't P think of his name right now. oh poe P P yeah and so it's like all of these like so-called upgrades and then they just went in the dumpster fire i don't I, like 
I don't know if- I think it could be an org problem, I, because I, I have just, to be nice, because I know somebody in CLG, so I gotta be very nice. Like, <laughs> don't, don't make me know. say- hey, hey, we, we don't hold punches, What do you man, mean? What do you mean? Come on now. Don't make come me on. say- it's Don't make me do back. it! Don't make me do There's, it! <laughs> I mean, and we don't have to dissect CLG for a long time, and we can just diagnose them as, like, a, like, this team as a five-man core just doesn't work, and- and maybe it's actually, like- not a bad idea. I'm not saying to bench Pobelter because of Pobelter, but to bench somebody to change up the roster entirely, just to do to throw something new. Um, but that I thought like but do that having Deosin wasn't a bad idea. I would say do that for Wiggly. Do that for Ruin if you want to throw somebody something new in there. Yeah. I don't think Ruin's offered anything. Like this man yeah. will play Gangplank, run it down, always play forward, die, and then he's just completely useless. The last game he on, on Rumble, he could have just taken the Flash. And his wave is pushing toward, and who's he's facing? Impact. The wave is pushing towards him, and he's gonna win. He just goes on a tower and dies. Like what? What is going on here? Mm -hmm. This man's brain has just left his mind. It, his brain is literally on the ground, running away from him when he's playing these games. I don't know, man. <laughs> it's just yeah. What do you think, Shinryu? Uh, I I don't know. So like for CLG, like realistically though, the bot lane's like a pretty stacked ass lane if you think about it. Like. Mm -hmm. FBI is arguably, <laughs> well, no, not even arguably. FBI is the best laning ADC in NA right now, statistically speaking. At I least. think he's been, I, he's played great actually. People sleep on him. He's played pretty well actually. Yeah. Well, like you have FBI and who he, uh, who he in his game against C9, bro. He was he was going off. <laughs> he was mm -hmm. fucking laning everything. So like realistically, you have good bottlings everywhere, and then you have like what CLG has. I think CLG's main issue lies in jungle and top like ruin is i think like the worst top laners in the league in my opinion so let's i think if you were to do something to clg i would start at the top but i think like if somebody told you like in two in two months we find out that clg just goes boom and their entire like their entire team's gone i would not be surprised you, look, you know it's just you look at their player cams or their webcams when they're playing it's like they're just so you know just they look so distraught they look so like just done at this point and i don't want a team like that in the playoffs you know that's just me i would rather have dig i would rather have immortals obviously um in the playoffs over them and i know one of them obviously can't make it either but i'd rather have one of those two over clg you know because i do think they are like you know the worst team in the league like I, imt and dig are trying and i, I and that's something to me. You could be the worst team, but at least you're trying. At least you're showing me something. At least they're not um, complete dog shit. Oh, well, they are, but you know, at least they're not rolling around and losing just because you know they're it, they, they, their styles suck and they're not gonna make anything out of, out of their orgs or their teams. But at least they're attempting to try something that's not working. You know, but CLG is just it's just there's no hope. I just don't see the hope. Mm -hmm. I don't see it. There's nothing there for me. Honestly, honestly, there. You know, um. What other team can we go over quickly? Because I wanted to touch on um, Evil Geniuses. So, unpopular opinion, I don't think this whole Golden Glue and Hooney thing is working out. I don't think so. This is just mm -hmm. bad. Sorry, so, EG, this shit sucks. Something LS has said for a while, which I've always, I, I'm always i kind of behind, is uh, putting Golden Glue top and putting Jazuke back in mid. Um, or even, or yeah, uh, Jazuke mid and Golden Glue top because yes, Kume might be like having a better split than he did last split, but I think Golden Glue has the shot calling, he has the experience, and that's kind of like why they brought him into Evil Geniuses. If you keep, you can keep him, put him on a tank, keep Jazuke, you have this firepower with Svenskara and Jazuke bang. And you have a stable top laner who can shot call with Zazel and take that pressure off. I think that's the best thing you could do. And I, I don't, I, I agree. I don't think you can buy into this Hooney running it down while Golden Glue's a mediocre mid laner. It just doesn't work anymore. Hooney's like the scrim god. <laughs> scrim god, right? Good god, man. I just, I think they were waiting for Kumo to have that last bad week. Because to be fair to Kumo, this split, he was playing better. And I had a lot of hope for him this split. He had that one bad week. It was, they're like, oh no, now we can use that against him. Let's bring in Hooney. I was like, it's one bad week though. Yeah. Yeah. He was doing good on the, he was abusing. He was one of the first people to abuse the new Volibear top and he was yeah. doing really good with it. And then he kind of started like being okay. And then he, like you said, he had that bad week and then they were just like, yeah, let's just blow this shit up. But I mean, realistically, that team is volatile in the first place. Like, Jazuke is the most coin flip player <laughs> I can think 
<laughs> him or Hooney. They're both like extremely like, all right, let's see if one of them's gonna go nine and zero or if they're gonna go zero and nine. Like, especially that game, like Jazuke was playing against C nine when he was playing Cassidy, and he didn't take fleet footwork or Doran Shield <laughs> against Bakara. <Bacala. laughs> Like, that's just asking to never touch minions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no sustain. You're just going to get bullied out of lane constantly. Uh, and what happened? They got fucking clapped. <laughs> good God, man. I was like, uh, this week, it was... When when they played... Let me get the game up here right now, because I, I, I don't remember... Sorry, guys. Sometimes I, I miss some of the games. Just kidding. I watch all this shit. I'm just fucking around. I choose to not to remember NA games at all. It's just like, when I'm doing my... LCS like breakdowns and shit on the channel. I usually only get like one good quality game and the rest are pretty bad. Like for EG, I think that Huni is Huni likes to be the star of the team and then it does not sync up well. Like I, I think they wanna have a team where they wanna play through Huni, but it doesn't work when you have Bang. That definitely doesn't work when you have Zazel. Like the every person on their team I could definitely see is not on the same game plan, you know? Well, did you like they were talking about that uh, earlier? Uh, I think it was actually the last split they were talking about it, but they were like, since Garen's got his own plan, jazuke has got his own plan, and Bang and Zazel have their own thing. Like, they're all just that trying like, to do whatever the fuck they want, and that's why there was never any team cohesion. That sounds like Damn One, actually, from the LCK. If you guys watch uh, LCK, Damn One no, is like Damn that. One. Oh, Damn. I love Damn One, bro. <laughs> Damn One will always, I love Damn bro, One. Damn One will always do. They're not like Damn One is probably one of the best non-cohesive teams I've ever seen. Their players all do something completely different, no matter what game. Doesn't matter what game you play. They're always doing something different, but they're so good individually that it makes up for their weaknesses, which is you know non-cohesive team synergy. EG's team synergy is just. I don't even know what it is. It's just like Golden Blue scales worse than like he, he's a. I guess he's a better frog in this split. Bang and Zazel, they like to be lane dominant, but they're usually not. But they're always, you know, never losing the game, but they're never actually winning it either. Huni and Svenskaren are like, I guess you. I don't know. Huni's not the. No, he's definitely one of the worst top laners. I'm not even gonna lie about that right now. You also so have like, um, Sven. He's not been playing that bad, you know. But, but but like in in EG's defense, mm -hmm. Niggery and Showmaker are arguably the most skilled players in their position in the world. Like right? for Niggery, like there's very few top. Like obviously, the Shy is the best top laner in the world. I don't care what you say. <laughs> He's the Shy is the best top laner. Thirty six minutes, pretty good. He is too. That's that's true. But I will still take the shy over anybody else when it comes to top. But like Showmaker and, and Nugri are like easily two of the most skilled players in their position, especially in the LCK. <laughs> mm -hmm. So like I mean Jazuke is just too I'm either running it down or I'm hard carrying my team. Like and he was like that in EU as well. Like when he was in the LEC, he was like that where he would have this quirky game where he was just hard carrying mm -hmm. and then there'd be other games where he was running it down <laughs> all right so what other team can we cover cover before we do, do the week nine prediction because guys this is the last week for the lcs 2020 summer split uh let's go to FlyQuest as the last team to cover and then we'll go on to the predictions um what do you guys think about FlyQuest? Ooh, it's interesting I, th I think FlyQuest is, like, the stereotypical, like, fourth place, could be third place team. <laughs> I, th I think, like, the team, like, who uh, who was it last season? Oh, yeah, CLG last season, last year. Where it's, like, CLG are, like, right there. Like, you're, like, oh, man, I could see them making worlds. That would be so realistic. And then, like, somebody else comes and takes it from them. Like, they're, and, and I don't think it's, like anything holding them back, I think it's just kind of the sum of their parts. Mm -hmm. Like, PoE's a good mid, Wild Turtle's not a bad AD, like, Solo's pretty good, Santorin's pretty good, Ignar's pretty good, but they're not, like, anywhere near some of the, like, like best three or the best mm -hmm. two, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but I definitely think, like, they are a strong team, if and I think their team play is, like, what carries them through games. If Ignar's not on a playmaking support, it just kind of feels like they're a little lost. I feel I like I'm watching Huhi. Yeah, then you also oh, have like Solo. A... Like, Solo, I don't know. I don't think he's been amazing this split, but he's been solid. Santor... He's been performing pretty well these past few games. Yeah. yeah. He's a good weak side top player, to be honest. Yeah. 
Power of Evil, you know, it, it just feels like the team needs Power of Evil and Ignar. I don't know what their team's going to look like next year if these guys aren't on their roster. Imagine them with, like, Golden Glue and <laughs> Zazel. <laughs> Imagine a, a lane of Wild Turtle and Zazel and Golden Glue and Centaur and Solo. <laughs> Yeah, no, they, like, need, they need PoE and Ignar, to be honest. Like, PoE is their main win condition most of the time, because they usually just put them on some scaling mid, like Oriana. And, like, I, mean, I, definitely like have, I definitely have faith in, like, FlyQuest as an org, because, like, last year, they were, like, top-tier garbage with, like, like <laughs> very few good imports and, like, just not good players. Um, and they, like, made the investment when they, like, changed ownership and, like, changed their branding around. They, like, picked up Solo, PoE, and Ignar. Um, like... Those are all, like, really good players, and they, like, revitalized the team, it felt like. So, I mean, I definitely have faith for their future, and I definitely think, like, they're they're going to keep their carries. Okay, let's go to the Week 9 prediction. Saturday, Sunday, well, that will conclude the rest of the uh, LCS 2020 Summer Split. It's been a long ride right, for everybody, but yeah, C9, hopefully they can go 2-0. And they're actually going to play the very first game of Friday. Friday, Cloud9 is facing off against Dignitas. Is Dig gonna beat Cloud9? Please no. I, I hope not. Man. I <laughs> hope. Not. I'm hoping not, and for my prediction's sake, I hope Dig go O2. Um, <laughs> but I think, like, actually, as a matchup, Dig actually fall really flat into C9, where like mm -hmm. a lot of Dig strength comes from their bot lane, and I think like C9 can play a really easy weak side bot lane and play through their top, where I think Dig's actually got a really bad top right now in um, Viper, um, and so I think they can play for like hard carry top, play through Licorice, Nisky Blabber, and just play weak side bot, and it's an instant W. Um, but I think like if they try to do some odd c9 wukongs and a bs then i think it actually gets scary um because dig are like not the worst team in the league um that's clg um but yeah that's my opinion <laughs> yeah i mean let, let's hope c9 gets some momentum this week because i really think that this week will help them into the playoffs their momentum um and depending on whether or not they tie break with tl ts uh, but i do hope that you know they at least get the win over dig and they're which is clg Okay, uh, Shen, you you picking uh, C9? Yeah, I think you just gotta shut down uh, Dardoch, to be honest. If you shut down Dardoch, then you should be fine. And... Also, I forgot to ask, fucking hell, Flair, who is the team mm -hmm. you support? Oh, if, if, I, if I'm like a fan of one team or the other? Yeah. Uh, I, probably Team Liquid? Ew, yeah. gross! Kind of kick, kick you out. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Good God, Jensen is one beautiful man. Just gonna tell you that. I'm just. Oh just no. I'm just... Ever since, well, like how I got into league was through double lift, and so I'm kind of torn right now in between my like, am I gonna be a gross TSM fan that like is like <laughs> oh, crazy <cool>. TSM <laughs> spam TSM chance all the way, or am I gonna like be like stay my allegiances with Liquid? You wouldn't be um, different than half the people in the C9 fan group, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, so man. it's like, oh my god, uh, Shen's taking shots. Oh my god, <laughs> just taking all the jabs at him. No, no, it's just sometimes in the group people can be, you know, a little bit. Uh, how would I say this? Uh, they see the game from a surface level analysis, and it's like, I, I remember I posted something about uh, who's the best C9 player all year. I personally think it was Niski, you know, and then they're like, well, Blabber is by stats. Stats are not gameplay. And when I, and people said, oh, yeah, there is stats game. Stats are BS. That's what I tried to tell them. Like, what, what, what are the matchups? You know, um, the people like, jungle proximity. Well, where well, where was the jungler at all game? You know, it's just things like that. But stats are gameplay, dude. It's it's Blabber. It's like They, they are just very, very emotional. And well, I, I, I mean, know, I just kind of very weird. Stats are blabber, contextual. But... I would argue Blabber, but I would also argue that they do put a lot into Blabber. Mm -hmm. So I feel like, yeah, you could argue Blabber is the best, or you could argue somebody else. But like the real, like realistically speaking, they do put a lot into him. Like when Blabber does not play well, or they don't play around Blabber, you can see that they don't do as well. It's and funny how seen in mean... recent weeks. Yeah, it's funny how C9 actually brought in Blabber, because a lot of the times when they bring rookies in, they play for a rookie to, like, get them more comfortable, and it felt like C9 kind of created a monster, because once they, like, played around Blabber, it, like, never stopped being playing around Blabber, and it's kind of now C9 is playing around Blabber, and they've created this monster of, like, oh, shoot, what happens when he's behind? 
Um, but I, mean, I do think Flyber is the best player on C9, in my opinion. They did the same with Contracts when Contracts was his rookie split. Yeah. Like, Bro, he yeah. was mm-hmm. fucking insane. Yeah. Like he had that mm-hmm. Rengar game where he was like fucking thirteen and one or some bullshit. The, like, oh, opening Lee Sin <laughs> game. The opening Lee Sin game. Oh my god, dude! I was like, hey, this is our guy now. And well, uh, good luck. Now he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Bro. I've been. I was. Uh, I was on the Blabber train even last year going into Worlds. I argued that Blabber was significantly better than Sin's here and at Worlds. Like if you look at every game that he played in, mm-hmm. they were winning the early game because he was. It, he hard out jungled Yankos when they played G2. Like, and then mid game hit, and that's where he had his issues, though. Mid game hit, and he would kind of just like turn you his brain 20 off. minutes with Blabber, <laughs> you better hope to God it, he's playing Olaf because it's. <laughs> yeah, Olaf no, released him. Yeah. I'm just saying, uh, Bakugo and Deku have a relationship that the show needs to explore now because I'm interested. But just, I'm just fucking around. I'm a, I'm almost done with my hero season four. Oh, I'm boy. almost done with my hero season four. I'm at episode, I'm at uh, episode like, sixteen actually. But good god, I that. why is so um, why is why is Deku interested in Bakugo in that? <laughs> I'm just kidding, guys. Just fucking around. Good god. Um, okay. I got very confused for about <laughs> ten minutes. <laughs> Next, like they're more than friends. But uh, TSM versus Golden Guardians is the final game on Friday. These are both teams that beat Cloud9 and are going into this on a win streak, actually. Hmm. Golden Guardians get the W. Oh, I'm a, shit. I like the Mato, though, so. you know, <laughs> It's Tanner time. I Holy think, like, shit. I think we're seeing something very different with TSM compared to their last couple seasons and the fact that, like, I'm a man of patterns, and when the man and when the pattern's broken, something's changed. And I think TSM always like, oh man, there's some TSM hope right in the middle of like week six, week five. Oh man, TSM's back to their glory days, and then they kind of like fall off out of nowhere. And you're like, oh, well, it's just TSM. Um, This is the first time I feel like in a while we've seen TSM like kind of rise out of the ashes of that and now they're like on this odd win streak at the end of the season and it feels like they've got their groove to their step so i am gonna say tsm on this one i will say tsm t- i'm gonna say okay, Gold- so- i'm gonna say golden guardians actually i want golden guardians but if i had i want to golden guardians to win too, <laughs> i'm just fucking around i'm picking tsm what the fuck you guys what I also argue that double lift is the best ADC in NA. <laughs> I don't think he's the de- best AD carry, but I definitely think he's him and Bjergsen. Like people said at the beginning of the split, like man, double lift and Bjergsen, like they're back at it again. Like it be nuts, and like I didn't really believe it because it's like mm-hmm. they're so old. <laughs> like it, it, <laughs> oh my god, don't make plays, dude. That's just, like that doesn't make any sense. Um, and like. Um, they've played really well, um, and I can't like not give them the credit that they deserve. Oh my god, they're boomers. <laughs> they're old yeah. men. Their I mean, are what off. players have you, do you know of that like played in that season that isn't Wild Turtle? You know, like <laughs> no, no, no. You're, I, I, I agree. It's, it's like they're they're definitely stuck in their ways, but they're not <laughs> they're not dogs who you can't teach a new trick to. You know? Yeah, I, especially with Bjergsen being able to play. Like I think he like last season or last split he played like orange mid and played like some just like insane stuff in the mid lane so yeah i agree actually oh. i'm changing my mind i'm taking i'm taking golden guardians <laughs> i'm doing it i'm rolling i just gave it. my entire realistic spiel <laughs> yeah. on why golden guardians <laughs> were gonna lose he's like I mean, well, yeah i thought golden didn't... guardians were gonna get clapped by c9 and then demonte absolutely i don't think that's golden guardians off. being good i don't think that's golden guardians being good though i think that's c9 being do- like just absolute dog crap no credit like, to the golden guardians boys i mean here's the thing with golden guardians like if, i i guess i think they're actually so much better than they were um about like th- three or four weeks ago but like how far can you get with like haunter and like who he like how far can you get with some of those players like okay. in my opinion so haunter actually haunter uh, is getting better i i know Hunter, stat wise is arguably the best top laner and even gameplay he's actually extremely good both weak side and when people play through him but they mainly just go weak side and he yes. still pops off so Hanser actually and i used yes. to dog on Hanser back when he was on tsm but like Hanser but, actually is really good yeah i agree but my thing is is like when will we have like if you're going to be one of the best the, like top three teams and like i think like that for them to be tsm you have to be a top three team like 
you have to be able to like be like almost like you have to have players that are not just closer and you need to have players that are like someday level or like and i think fbi's got that or, like players that are like more than just one of those like uh standout players you need like two maybe three players like i think like tsm's got double lift bjergsen um bb can have pop-off games like Tvika can have pop-off games i think golden guardians is like is closer gonna play all the way oh he's not i'll golden see it tomorrow is this golden guardians roster <laughs> is definitely better than last year's Clutch Gaming roster. Mm-hmm. And Clutch Gaming absolutely upset everybody, with <laughs> the Mate specifically popping off in every series. So I will, I yeah. will, I'm will. i not going to say they're going to make top three. I still think that the top three teams right now are going to be top three realistically, but I think Golden Guardians can make the upset. Happen. I think they can challenge FlyQuest for the fourth <laughs> spot. If they play like they've been playing. Yeah. yeah. All right, next game is 100 Thieves versus Dig. Oh, my God. This is <laughs> Thank God, LCS, for these great opening matchups, right? 100 Thieves versus Dig. I mean, just, you already fucked me on Friday. Just fuck me right now, right? Good God. So, I'm just yeah. going to open up by saying uh, last splits should have been MVP is going to hard carry 100 Thieves. Someday should have won it last split, and he's going to carry them. Oh, man, someday um, should have been, someday should've someday's been first. Someday should have been an Elo hell. If you take... So, like, if you take what MVP actually stands for, the most valuable player, if you take Sunday off 100 Thieves last split, they are 10th place team. <laughs> they were absolute <laughs> fucking garbage. And Sunday's back was absolutely hurting. I'm <laughs> dragging them in his backpack. <laughs> <laughs> My god. At least if they, if they weren't going to give him, like, MVP, they should have given him all pro first. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. No. Oh. So like well, I think I think so he good. played better. I think he played better than Licorice though on the split, which is what it sh- it should it should yeah. be taking. Mm-hmm. But you I know, think MVP like, typically goes to the best player on the best team, which is, is it's not typically the, yeah. what it should. But it it shouldn't be that. It should be who was the most valuable. And if you take any of the C nine players off of C nine and replace them with some mediocre person, I still think they were first place last split. What if you replace? I, I just don't think it changes. What if you replace Ven with Mash? <laughs> Just uh, I, I, I see, still think you got it. <laughs> see, and that's the thing. Yeah. I think, like, it's how much you value some of parts. So, like, FlyQuest, I don't think you could give a single MVP vote to, right? Because, like, none of their players are, like, the sum of their parts. They're all, like, a team-oriented team. Whereas, like, Evil Geniuses or, like, 100 Thieves with, like, the carries of, like, Jazuke or Someday where, like, if they, if they play well, they play freaking well but like with the thing with someday is is that like a a he played weak side a couple games and it granted it lost 100 thieves the game but like i think you need to have like a team willing to put you forward to even be contention for mvp even if he did play super super well um but also, I think Licorice is just a better player. Um, Licorice played weak side, and when he did play weak side, he was extremely good at it. So if you just look at the top lane matchup, he, I feel like even on weak side, even on strong side, Licorice was just a better player. Um, they did like Lane Kingdom videos on him. He was just insanely good. But I would I disagree with Licorice being the better top laner. However, I could, I definitely can agree that there's arguments for either of the two to be the best top laner. Now, what about me? LCS. Now, what about me? What if I was the best top laner? Then you would be the best top laner. There bro, you still behind Rune, bro. Come on. You behind Rune, bro. Come on. I would smash all these kids in lane. All right. Oh, the next game on Saturday is Golden Guardians versus EG. <coughs> I'm going to just say Golden Guardians. That's what I'm going to say. But, yep, yep, I agree. Okay, next game is IMT mm-hmm. versus Team Liquid. All right, okay, next game is CLG versus FlyQuest. Cause <laughs> we know Team Liquid's gonna win. <laughs> if CLG have think... Pobelter benched still, uh, yeah, it's an easy one to chance. Fly. But if they have Pobelter in, I think like there's some miracle that could happen. Do I think it's gonna happen? <laughs> ah, probably not. <laughs> Let's go. For well, it's a, yeah, it's announced that Pobelter's not playing. Mm. Oh yeah, that's, that's okay. Yeah, never mind. That's right. So yeah, yeah, no, he, he, he right. even tweeted out that he's going to play in academy. Oh my god! Oh, their game's going right now. Let me see who they're actually put in. Let me check, check, check their academy game. I'm right. pretty sure it's Phil Belter because he tweeted out. It oh is. My he, god. He, they, yeah, he they, they put in Tuesday. The the mid laner they've had since NA had challenger scene around 2017. What the oh. fuck? 
What's wrong with this? Tuesday's Tuesday not horrible, but he's not Poe Belter either. <laughs> and that's not going to fix that, that roster. <laughs> I'm sorry, that is not going to fix it. Well, Tuesday, again, playing Poe Belter in, uh, in a LCS Academy, man. What a time to be alive. Oh my god. Biofrost and Poe Belter in Academy are recycled <laughs> talent. I'm just kidding. It's Dude, like, like I I swear, like there's some like there's certain players in NA that like get kind of like tossed around, like and it's really annoying. Like Pro Belter, Golden Glue, Biofrost, and like the players that like obviously should be like one of those players that's like uh they have value because they're one of the good residents, but because they're a resident, they're tossed around because they think because people are like, oh, we'll just throw in somebody else because they're an import or this or the other, like. Why does Ryoma have a starting spot on 100 Thieves? Like, why? Like, what reason could you not throw in Golden Glue or Pole Belter? He, he probably costs, like, uh, 60k like, for a contract, probably. I don't know. I have mixed feelings about the the Ryoma, because, like, he's had games where he's popped off, and then there's the majority of games where eh, he's mediocre. I don't know. I, I think they're and, and an I, spot. I, I agree, but why can't you develop in him in Academy? What's the difference between, and especially with online games now, what's the point of putting him in on the main roster instead of just putting him in an academy and see how he develops? Giving And uh, OCE solo queue is not much better. Than, it's actually it's far worse than NA solo queue. So you're giving him solo queue opportunities. You're giving him the academy slot. Like I'd, and, and guess what? Even because he's an academy and he's an OCE player, he doesn't take up an import slot anymore. So it's... It, it makes total sense to put him in Academy, and you can have a better serviceable non-import player and possibly import for somebody like um, your like jungle or your AD or your uh, your support category or even your mid. You know, it just doesn't make any sense. I definitely agree with you. They're wasting an import slot, in my opinion. They definitely it's, are. It's a waste. Next game is... Um, oh, next, sorry, Sunday. Final uh, game for the LCS 2020 Summer Split, unless we play Tiebreakers on another day. Uh, we have EG versus 100 Thieves on Sunday. First game. Uh, 100 Thieves. Uh, someday is a better player than Hooney. And, <coughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And the rest of the... T- like, honestly, uh, pretty much EG's only hope is Bang, in my opinion. Uh, bang. Mm-hmm. Bang but is... Bang's running it down too, though. Yeah, bang but... Bang looking like that great either. But comparatively to the rest comparatively, of the team, yes, mm-hmm. yes, he's, I, I he's know what you mean. Consistent. So mm-hmm. I'll I'll say unless Bang pops off, I I just think someday is a much better player. Yes. than Huni. Well, definitely more consistent. I think Huni has his his games where he can pop off. But well, yeah, and one of the biggest factors you look into when you're looking at like team matchups is like, okay, well, can like a weak side absorb pressure well? Someday's not going to run it down if he's the weak side. And if they just put in resources into Cody's son, you know, like, but like evil geniuses, the only, you know what they're going to do before the match even starts. They're going to give Huni gangplank or rumble. Okay. Well, you ban out those. Huni's going to play like fuck freaking Lucian top or some bullshit. And they're going to try and do some weird, like heavy side top side. And it, it with someday it's just not going to work. And, and I agree. So like, EG, honestly, they just like, they need somebody like honestly. They would work really well with Demonte because that's how Clutch Gaming made it in last year. Like, yeah, they had Hooney and he absorbed a lot of pressure, but Demonte would pop off. They don't have that with Golden Glue. Golden Glue is gonna just sit there and try not to lose lane. That's literally how he plays. So I think like with EG, I just I just don't see them doing anything. I just think someday is a much better player than anybody on EG really. And I feel like if they just give him like Camille or something, <laughs> I feel like he can just hard carry. And then next game is C9 versus CLG. That's CLG's <laughs> last game is C9. Holy crap! That's good god. <laughs> well, yeah, they did. Uh, yeah, they did on the analyst desk. Uh, like I think last week, who has the hardest matchups of the of the last remaining like four matches? And CLG was second place <laughs> with like Ooh. one of the some of the hardest because they had TL, Golden Guardian, C9, and uh, FlyQuest. Like those are all like pretty decent teams and clg are not looking good so yeah no, it's it's doomed it's Should doomed free win for c9 actually hopefully match i'm never gonna hopefully, hopefully. i will never <laughs> like are you basically taking uh was it c9 or the field that's kind of what it is in this one i are you do you take the field i don't know does the field look that good is the grass shaved you know is the sun out 
I don't think so. One of those, like, crappy YMCAs that you see <laughs> in, like, one of those really shitty suburban neighborhoods. Like, that's the field right now with CLG. Like, that's that's what you're getting. I'd be very, very surprised. But, like, it, it, I don't know. Freaking playing and watching sports since I was four. Like, you see upsets all the time. That should not have happened. Like, there you have no fucking business happening. <laughs> Most of the time an upset happens, though, when it's, like, you don't... When the team that's supposed not supposed to win it's not that they look bad it's that they're more unknown we know everything about clg we know what they're like we know everything about them they're not unknown they're, they're not like team liquid versus ig where we don't know how liquid's gonna play they pulled out scarner this that like that's an upset where like they it's random clg we know exactly what's gonna happen we, ruin's gonna run it down wiggly's gonna have bad passing tuesday's not gonna look like a uh uh, actual mid laner, um, and then uh, there's going to be crappy synergy in the bot lane. We know that's going to happen, and if it doesn't, then they're just going to look subpar average. I love you. Oh, it's what? What? All right. So uh, the match of the week is going to be Team Liquid versus TSM. The teams who are battling for first. So if Liquid goes zero two, there's a good chance to <coughs> nine. If they go two zero, and if TM TSM go two zero, they can fight for. A spot in first place, actually. Yeah, so I think um, TSM and C9 can both compete for a tiebreaker, if I'm not mistaken. Because even if C Liquid go 0-2, they still have the head-to-head -head mm -hmm. with most of them. So it's they're competing for a tiebreaker at that point. But I think... Uh, uh, it, yeah. Mm. I think Team Liquid have this game, though, if I'm being All honest. All I'm going to say is support dip. <laughs> support diff. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Ooh. Well, Treats is good. I feel like Treats has not necessarily been one of those players where you're like, damn, he like played like this n monster thrush game or like a nutty bard game. It's like, he, he, like, if you watch TSM's, uh, uh, whatchamacallit videos, they're like docu-series. Um, TSM Legends? Yeah, yeah. Um, he's pretty infamous right now for being like their newest shot caller and like a player mm -hmm. that can play around their macro really well. Um, Good old TSM, they'll never cease to actually just switch anybody out, you know? Right when they start sucking, you're, you're, you're done. You're going to okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, but if I had to, like, if I had to look at each lane and I had to say who's better, I'm taking Impact, even though, like, even the more recent years, he's been a little, a little iffy. Over but Yes, I will take Impact. Yeah. Okay, especially okay. weak side. Especially weak side. Impact's okay, actually okay. a pretty good weak side laner compared to Broken Blade, who generally needs resources or else he doesn't do as good. Um, jungle, uh, you know, Brox is a shit show is kind of just like <laughs> he's there, like he exists, he is on the team. His uh, recent games have looked a lot better, though. That's true. Uh, mid lane, they're both, I think, those are the two best mids in NA right now, mm -hmm. and I don't think it's really close as far as individual talent goes. I think Niski's like in there, but he's he's my third, but like mm -hmm. those two are the two best. Bot lane. Uh, tactical is really good, so is double lift. But I think the main difference is going to come in the fact that Core JJ this split. Do they give him blitz or not? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if they give him blitz, a eh. little bit of a uh, little bit of uh, fact or like uh, trivia um, treats and uh, uh, what's his face? Double lift. I can't think of his name right now. No, no, not treats and double lift. Uh, treats and tactical played together in TSM Academy. I remember that they were actually the best academy bot lane. Yeah, they were the best bo academy bot lane. So it's not only a rivalry between Core JJ and Double Lift, but it's treats and tactical. Just to add some. That's level crazy spice though. The they effects. were the they were the best they were the best bot lane in academy outside of who else was there? Piglet and Vulcan, and then <coughs> now it's literally they're battling for first place in the LCS. That's crazy. All, all, the, all, the, all of this shit comes full circle, but I don't know. If TSM, I think they can win this game, though. They actually definitely can. It just depends, like, that game against C9, is that really TSM, though? Because they've said by I, stats, I don't like you use these, but you can see it. This time it's true in the gameplay. Th they've actually had their fastest week since a while, actually. This has been, been like they're, they've actually getting, they're actually getting to a point where they can play faster, you know, but is that really them or is that them beating on a team that's slumping? You never really know, but yeah, Team Liquid's gonna win. <laughs> I think TL just capitalizes on mistakes better. I mean, yeah. like, people in the first half of the split, like, they were pretty much saying, like, they didn't deserve it. And honestly, I think, like, that first loss 
or that first one they had against Immortals, I didn't think they would lose. Like, Insanity derped, like, hard <laughs> derped that ult. If he didn't derp that ult, that was game. But they lost, so, like, you know, <clears throat> TL still won the game. They look a lot more, I, I won't say convincing, they just, they win. Like, their games aren't super exciting, but they get the W. I think TL as a team is just better than TSM, but I also, like, on paper, they both have the best teams, in my opinion, if you look at individual talent across the board. I, I think whichever jungler makes the least mistake will be the team that wins. I think both yeah. both of the junglers are pretty weak. Um, You know, they both have mess up. I think Spica is slightly more worse than Broxa, so I am leaning a little bit towards TL. I can respect. Last game of the season. It all comes down to this. The games we've been waiting for. This is how you end the LCS 2020 Summer Split. But FlyQuest versus Immortals. <laughs> cool. That's easy. Dude, I just, want, I just want Immortals. Like, I just... They've been so close so many games. Right? Like, I just want them to get one. Like, please, just close <laughs> out one game for once. Like, you guys got it. Like, <laughs> Come on. You can do like- it. Put a wall in back on Malphite and give Insanity Oriana again, and you you try to run that Wombo again. You just do it. You send it. I really want to see, like, some consistency, because, like, especially this week, like, Insanity's played, like, what, I think it's, like, eight different champions in, like, ten games or something like that? Like, I want to see them try to do something and stick with it. I feel like they're just kind of like, oh, we're in the LCS now. Like, le- like no coach. Let's do this. Goodbye, Frenchman. Like, we can do this. And, <laughs> and it's been like, it's been like this odd mix of like just playing League of Legends when it's more than just League. It's it's you've got to play a style. You've got to be Team Liquid or C9. You've got to try to do something. And it doesn't seem like they try to do things. It just seems like they want to play League and play to win. Oh, that's what I wanted to uh, bring up was that um, TL, their academy team, is literally what, like 3 and 11, 3 and 12? They actually, their academy team looks bad, so they have no one that they can pull from right now that I, I think looks pretty good. So I think they did a pretty good job on uh, bouncing back from double lift. I know people kept saying, oh, tactical is not double lift. He doesn't have to be double lift. What the fuck? He can be his own player. Why can't he just be good because he's good? It doesn't, it doesn't have to be double lift, though. I don't like when people talk like that. It's so sick. You're just downplaying a guy because you don't like him because you don't think he's double lift. Like, that's just a bad mentality. These We need other players like tactical, you know, players who are just good because they're good, you know. I think people are always stumbling with this, like, you know, they have to be like this guy or the battle. It's like, no, they can be their own player. You know, there's differences between players, but I like players who can, you know, play for themselves. And that's what I've seen Tactical do. So I'm actually really pl- proud of TL for uh, getting Tactical where he needed to be. Also, Jad. Jad is probably something TL have needed for a while. So also kudos to Jack too. So most improved, most improved uh, spot in LCS. I, <laughs> I, think, I think Jack can you consider him like i feel like a lot of people are like well he's the like he came into a team that was one four splits in the row and like they had like double lift weighing them down like of course they're gonna be first all of a sudden where i'm like well you get rid of double lift who is the sh- like major strong side player you have you bring in broxa who comes from uh, like a different style of play entirely in europe like i think jat has probably evened out that team better than any other coach probably could um, and I think that's probably one of like the most underrated things about him um, mm-hmm. is how much he's evened out this team. And, that and pretty- another thing for them is they uh, they even spoke about it. Like Cordy Jays mentioned it. Like playing with tactical is so much different because he doesn't need resources. Like tactical mm-hmm. can play perfectly fine weak side. And then also another issue they've had. Brox has spoken about it a lot. Is you take Brox and you look at him in LEC. What do you get? You have a heavy early game jungler, somebody that likes to constantly apply pressure early. And now they're putting them on like scaling teams where you have to play slow. Yeah. So yeah. you're taking I think that's the main issue with Broxa and why he looks mediocre this split is because you're taking him from something he's used to, which is heavy early, constant fighting, constant aggression. And you're like, hey, calm down. We want to just hit 30, 40 minutes and win in team fights. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I agree. No, everything is yeah. Uh, all said there. Uh, if you guys are watching any other region, I forgot to ask Flair. What regions do you watch outside of LCS? Because we know you, we, all of them. We know you love to watch our lovely quality LCS region. You know, <laughs> I'm I'm mainly if I had to like put a priority on either of them, it's probably LCK. LCK is just mm-hmm. so fun to watch. 
Um, I watch it because it looks like they're finally trying to uh, play faster, uh, go faster, and it they're so bad at it. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like, they're it's, so it's like, bad it's at like, it, man. It, it looks like we're looking at like LPL Challenger or whatever you'd call it, L- LPP or whatever it's called. Yeah. Um, because like it's not that they're bad players, and you can see the mechanical prowess out of most of their players, but it's like so funny seeing like damwon look so good but yet like i don't know if they do well against an lpl team to be honest okay so now that we're in the international side i love watching lpl and lck right more than lcs mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. that's 90 percent of what i watch mm-hmm. um the top five teams in lpl would pretty much smash any other team in any other region except maybe the top three and probably t1 for lck like Ooh. lec i don't think they're making anywhere close uh, top esports would probably smash anybody. Uh, JD, probably the same. Invictus, probably the same. V5, <laughs> LGD. You can get right? all the way down to World Club, dude. It's, it's yeah, China's stacked. China's China really is stacked. absolutely dude, you could even stupid. Ta- dude, it's you, so... Dude, you could take Team World Elite, put them in LEC. They're probably top three. Team World Elite with Morgan. Like, you know... And then you have F- F- FPX and RNG... They're probably not, like, they're not that good right now. Uh, I think there's much better teams than them in their league, too. Like, LGD, LGD, put LGD in, Ch- in EU, let those EU players talk shit. No, you're getting probably destroyed. Sooning, oh. Sooning, you know, Sooning's yeah. really pretty good. You already know about FPX, you can put them in LEC and they're first. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> you know this, they're 3 0 and everybody. <laughs> Dude, they're really good at uh, making French people very upset. <laughs> LEC. So, like, LEC's main kryptonite, like, they finally learned, like, in the last two years, they finally figured out how to beat LCK. And then the LEC, or the LPL just came in and was like, what about us? And they're like, oh, we got this. We just beat, you know, T1. You know, oh, we can beat you guys. And they got absolutely fucking clapped. Dude, that's <laughs> funny. As a G2 fan, I just fucking woke up, watched... The, I, I was like, I'm gonna watch my team win world. Anybody nope. on this continent should be a G2 fan, I, I must say. I love G2, man. Or in, love, this, in the I've west watched, side. I've, dude, I've watched, a... dude, I've watched them ever since I came into the EU, man. I love those guys. Carlos is so stupid that you just love him because he's so retarded. He, this man <laughs> said this man said he would... G2's gonna be richer than the Dallas Mavericks. How do I not respect that? <laughs> So yeah. like, I don't like I didn't like G two, but also I love shit talking and right? like I fucking yeah. hate when I see like in our group people are like oh be hum no fuck be- that bro I want to see people <laughs> talking shit. dude people are just and a bunch so, like, of fucking pussies man no shit talk what, like, that is what I loved about G two is they talk shit all the way until they got clapped and then after they I got think- clapped they're like oh yeah like they were good sports about it they're like yeah no and like they make jokes about it now like. They and, constantly meme on themselves about getting 3 0 and they're like, well, guys, I wonder which three teams are going to, or which four teams are going to go to get 3 0 by LPL again. And it's like, and I, and I definitely, every day. I, I, I agree. And, and from somebody that comes from like an actual competitive background, like shit talking is more, it, like, it's harder than a lot of people think. It's like, not because you have to be creative with this at the other, but you're putting so much on the line. You're yeah, like, you get, you get clapped. You get clapped yeah. you're gonna yeah. be the meme you're gonna be the joke and like it doesn't and and like the next time you play the next time you're in a, a very tense situation that's the only thing that echoes in your head and so like not only in my opinion is it like cool that they're shit talking but they're also like it it it's a, a service to the fans and like that's kind of the point and like they're having fun I, with I it. that's what makes it fun and like that's why like um a, a lot of people say like a lot of pro players don't play League of Legends because it's fun. They play League of Legends because it's something to... It's, like, the competitive yeah. atmosphere. Um, and, like, they they said this about Double like, Double Doublelift doesn't play League of Legends because he loves League of Legends. He plays League of Legends so he can shit-talk people and enter- entertain people. And, like, have fun. Oh, he does entertain. I, I he love does enter- He loves... He, <laughs> I, I, he, enta- he entertains me. Good lord. Yeah, I'll, exactly. I'll, I'll and that. so, like... Uh, I think G2 do a bigger service to the fans than actually but people it's like, understand. Dude, like, I, I, I don't understand where this little girl mentality comes from where it's like, oh my god, you gotta be humble. D- these guys would never talk shit about each other. What the fuck? What, what planet do you live on? What? Do you, what? What fucking unicorn planet do you live on where you think guys in a competitive 
sport, don't talk shit about each other. Literally, people keep saying, because the number one argument for that is, oh, the Korean players would do it. No, 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 you are, you are full of shit. Because in the SKT versus Splice series last year, Clid literally tells, um, Khan, oh, uh, dude, you don't have to worry, worry about top lane. You're so much better than him. Oh, uh, real, real humble, real humble, right? What the fuck? <laughs> and like, and there's a sense of like, um, maturity and like, uh, I'd, I'd say like, um, meeting nice where you're like when you meet like an actual other pro player like and and like i come from like the cs scene where like we like i go to lands and shit like that and i play and like you don't like just talk shit to be an asshole you don't talk shit to be an asshole you talk shit to have fun and like i definitely think like there's a sense of like that especially with like g2 and this at the other and a lot of teams in, in league where it's like they don't talk shit because they're talking shit to make the other person feel bad they're talking shit to have fun to spice it up to, to hype like, things up yeah. Yeah, yeah to add the hype to it and i think that's like where it's like more of a service than anything else it's like they're doing this to make it exciting like i don't want to um, try it I, I don't i hate things when they're dry man like it, it just, it's just boring. <coughs> People are like, oh my god. Like, so some dude's like, you should support Fnatic because they're good friends with C9. What the? What's that? What? <laughs> that means nothing to me. That means literally nothing. I could, Bro, my two, favorite, I could give two shits about Fnatic. My favorite argument, like, especially because I see it all the time. Like, I use our group a lot because I <laughs> just constantly dumb shit or, you know, something <laughs> going on. Right. But, like, they'll be like, they'll hate, like, they hate Double If. They fucking despise him. As a group, it seems. And it's because he talks shit. But then they'll go and support Caps. And I'm like, bro, Caps literally said in an interview that he was going to make Perks think it was an inter uh, international tournament. <laughs> How bad yeah, he was. Yeah. <laughs> bro, that shit was hilarious. And what did he do? He ended up smashing it. <laughs> like, <laughs> now they're they're right. they'll, be our, they'll be our not supporting Doublet's trash talk, but when Baniski and Blabber have trash I pretty much, pretty much trash talk the whole league. Like, double standard bullshit that I fucking p p p pisses me off. It's like, you just don't like Doublet as a person. Don't be like, oh, I hate him, because it's like... Yeah. Ever since emotes came in, that's all C9 spams, and it is fucking hilarious. <laughs> so, Nisky, and, Nisky going into 2019 summer split was like, yeah, uh, mid lane's pretty much going to be easy, because, like, what has Jensen accomplished? And, like, that shit was great. Like, I loved it. Like, yes, keep talking. Oh, yeah, and then, like... And there was, like, the promo video last year of, like, Niski uh, being like, well, you can compare me to Jensen, but, like, I, I'd rather be compared to Faker. It's like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> hey, like, hey, uh, dream big. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. He's kind of doing it, though. Like, uh, and, and no lie, like, he's doing well. Um, so, I mean, it makes sense, but damn, that was a fucking... Like, that and was, I was out another, there. Another one for, like, LPO. Like, they had a... People put out like translations of like uh, FPX's post game interviews, but they were hard shit talking. Fucking G two, they were like. But people only yeah. cared about when G two was, was shit talking. Like, the easy, that like, was like the easiest series we've ever had. Like they were just <laughs> oh, going shit. in. Like they were, uh. and like it's in, it's all in good fun. Like they meme, like G two memes people all the time. Like it's fucking but it, hilarious. But people like, only they meme themselves. But people only care about the the G2 trash talk. They don't they didn't even the FPX trash talk, people just turned a blind eye to that shit. And I was like, "What?" They People don't pay attention to it. Actually, I, most I, of the time it's, I think they're just they playing just don't dumb. Pay attention. I think they're just playing dumb. They definitely see it. It's just like, "Oh, it, it, it makes more I don't know. It kind of just fits the narrative to paint them as the bad guys because FPX, their narrative was, oh yeah, Dwayne B's making this big comeback. He's going to win worlds, you know, and then, oh yeah, his wife is supporting him. Like, why do I care? I'm glad his wife supports his competitive needs. What? <laughs> what are these narratives? You're basic people narrative that, that, that just should exist no matter what. I hope my wife supports me. Like, what? Then she's not my wife, apparently, then, you know? But. Yeah, well, Dwayne B was even flaming Gimgoon. Like, in the interviews, he was like, yeah, you know, we, had a, we had an inting top laner that I had to come carry and all this other stuff. Like, they would shit-talk each other. And By like, the way, he's digging them out of the grave right now in China. <laughs> right? I mean, well, they just so... picked up the last spot, I think, for playoffs. They can well, make... They're, they're, they might. It, it, we don't know, but the, he's been subbed in. Gimgoon oh. over Khan. That's right, mm -hmm. it's top six in OPL, huh? Yeah. And not like us, where we're doing top eight here. Well, no, it's top. Uh... If it's top eight, then they're already in. Yeah, it. it's top eight. They're, they so they they could be in it, but uh, RNG might be able to get a spot still. Ah, uh, we'll see. Zhao Hu will have to go Hard. pretty ham for that. I don't know. I think Fun Plus is going to get it. I don't know. I'd I like hope, to see Fun Plus I hope that they can clutch a world spot just for fun. 
I don't think they'll clutch the world spot. I don't know. I feel like the top three teams. Arsenal I think that it, might I, be. I just they're pretty solid. That's, that's what I think. Just imagine, like, if FPX managed to get a third spot at Worlds and get into, like, G2. Fourth spot. Fourth spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Fourth spot. Just imagine if G2 and FPX are in the same group and they have and they have the opening matchup in China. Oh, that'd be so good. amazing. <laughs> good God. Also, giant in a hotel room bar because they <laughs> don't have a stadium. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just hoping that, uh that it still like happens like as much as i don't want to see an lcs at worlds like i'm hoping that some bullshit doesn't keep them from going because it's in china and you know all that shit so mm. hopefully good point uh, it gets to continue for us but i'm excited for worlds this year because i think i think lck is gonna have a better <coughs> worlds this year uh given genji or not genji uh dragon x and damon and then, I mean, yeah, Genji's doing really good this split, too. But I think they are going to do a lot better. But I still just think that the top, like, five from LPL are just miles up better than anybody else in the world. Um, but so last last year, IG had the same record as Fun Plus, Fun Plus has now. Um, and they ended up coming top four at Worlds. <laughs> so, like, my thing with that is, like, you still have the Shy and... They still had Jackie Love and Rookie, and like Rookie was on his like downfall because he, you know, had his personal issues go on, and then ever since then he didn't wasn't doing that good. But you still have the best oh, top yeah. player in at least the LPL, and then you also have probably the best ADC in the LPL. So they, yeah. I, I never counted them out. I thought it was surprising when they dropped so low, but like I never thought they were out. And then I actually thought they had a good chance, and then they ran into. Good old FPX, right? Or was it Griffin that they lost to? They and... lost to FPX. FPX. Yeah, it was FPX, that's right. Mm. But um, with that, this has been a great show this week. Had the chance to have some guests on. If you, you guys, you guys are, are welcome to come back every single week. We do this every single week as the split rolls by. I don't know when we're gonna do another one about like we're, what we're, we usually do like random ones. Um. In the off season, we're talking about like Marvel, DC, Star Wars, and shit. Other than that, when when the season runs, it's pretty much all league. Uh, guys, as you guys know, Rift Insight is every single Monday. It's live streamed, and then uh, this week I can't wait to see Cloud Nine lose to Dig and CLG, and then cry myself to <laughs> sleep at night. But that's just me. So, yeah, anything you guys want to say before we close out? Thanks for having me on. Uraraka sucks. What? <laughs> hey, hold up now. <laughs> I like the girl who, 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 who I like the girl who who can like pull things out of herself. She's way more cooler. Momo or Mama, whatever they call her. Yeah, Yorozu. Yorozu. Ro- these these women names are insanely hard to like remember my brain because she's man, she's kind of thick though. But no, that's not the, not a video for that. <laughs> not the video for that. But oh my god, um, I don't know, dude. In my hero academia, can they stop telling me Tomura's name every single time? It's it's always a full pro- Tomura Shigaraki. I know his name. Stop saying it fully. It's weird. Just say Shigaraki, weirdos. Good God. Every single season, it's them reintroducing all the characters. Like, I know who these guys are in season four, you know, but nevertheless. Uh, All Might sucks. Deku sucks. Bakugo sucks. Todoroki sucks. Um, that's pretty much Re-Zero. it. ReZero is the number one anime out right now. <laughs> as it should be. Oh, I forgot. What are you guys watching actually right now in terms of anime, movies, or TV? Are we watching FMA? Two. FMA? Yes. Okay. Beautiful. Oh, I love, love it. it. Love it. Love it. Love that. It has, like, the worst ending for any anime ever, but it's one of the best animes ever, too. Which one? What did Zen say? FMA. Oh, I, I don't know the ending, so be careful. <laughs> oh, good. Good, you'll be surprised. It's not that bad, I'm just fucking around with you. Oh, wait, FMA Brotherhood, not... Oh, oh Brotherhood's good, good. Brotherhood's yeah, good. good. Yeah. Mm. It followed the manga more, it's much better. In my yeah, opinion. no, I, I, I finished FMA, the original, and good lord, that ending is just atrocious. Right? And the, the, then you watch fucking Conquer of Shambhala, it's not even that much better, it's like, oh, okay. Yeah, just just slip my throat, just do it do, do it right now, while, while I, I can't feel yeah. anything. Alright, see you guys later, like, comment, subscribe, most of all, enjoy, I'm the Nightwing, Way of, Way of Life Esports is signing out, Um, I have Scarlett Johansson right now in my house, and she's wanting some sex, so I gotta give it to her. That that it's it that's that's not true. That's you guys are you guys suck. You have no less of my jokes. I hate you all. Good God. Bruh, come on. <laughs> come on. Peace right, out. Yeah, Peace out. Goodbye. How can you make money with such a stupid idea? And how can you not make money with such a brilliant idea? Ah, at first we didn't know what to do with all the money. 
We tried burying it, <coughs> shredding it, <coughs> and burning it. <coughs> but in the end, we decided to just give it all away. Come again, sir. I'm getting back in line. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel for more stuff. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>